So if you play bass and you've ever thought about a five or a six string bass, somebody's probably told you Jaco only needed four. And that's true. Uh, for me, honestly, uh, I, I tend to prefer four string basses as well. Um, I just like the string spacing. I like kind of the size of the neck. I feel like I don't have huge hands, so I feel like I can wrap around it and play pretty comfortably. Um, but I do have one five string bass, and sometimes it's really nice to hit uh, that low B. Honestly, it's less the low B than like the D or the C that I really like. Um, but still, that five string is just a little bit, little bit too wide for me. It takes some adjustment, and I don't prefer it, um, which is why I really like to use BEAD bass tuning. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. That's not what I have on here right now. I've got some Rotosound flat wounds, but we're going to replace them um, with a BEAD set, talk about how to do that, uh, and see what it all sounds like. So when I first heard of BEAD setup, probably mid-2000s, uh, it was introduced to me as something that was common in country. I kind of scoured the internet to see if that was true or if somebody just told me that, and I couldn't really find much about that. Maybe it's, it's true. I, I really... I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Uh, but the gist is basically taking the bottom four strings of a five-string bass, tuning your four-string there, you lose the G, uh, but you gain a B. I think it's not a bad deal, especially if you're not you know, doing a lot of slapping and popping and stuff or playing things that really require that G. Um, honestly, I don't use it a ton as a bassist, so I feel like I can get the E, A, and D still while getting a low B, being able to play more comfortably up in, up in a higher position on the, the neck of the guitar and have more, more options there on the bass. Um, I really like it, but you know, it, your, your results may vary. A few things to keep in mind, so we're going to string this up with uh, what's basically the bottom four strings of like a light gauge uh, five string set. So we're going to go 60, 80, I'm not going to hold them all up, 100, and then 125 on the bottom. Uh, if you do do this, you're going to have to change your intonation, uh, most likely, depending on where it's set up, uh, and you might need to file out your nut slot as well. For us, <laughs> on this uh, particular P bass, I use this for auditioning different string sets all the time, so the nut's pretty, pretty worn uh, in, so we're just going to, it's kind of like a V groove. Uh, we're going to roll with that, see if we don't have to make a ton of modifications to get this playing right, uh, and get a little bit of a sound sample to see, see what it's like for us today. So I'm going to go ahead and string this up. I am going to hang on to these flat wound strings. Uh, I had a buddy ask me recently, he's like, can I take the flat wound bass strings off my bass and put something else on and put them on later? Yeah, I don't know. You can do whatever you want. Uh, I do that with regular guitar strings every so often if I need to. Um, it'll still work. It's not like it suddenly doesn't work because you, uh, you took it off the instrument. Especially with flat wound strings, they're pretty expensive, so uh, it's, it's worthwhile. So let's go ahead and get this changed up and then see what she sounds like. All right, so I'm strung up, but I'm not quite there yet. I uh, need to raise my action a bit. And of course, I didn't bring an Allen wrench, because, you know, why would, I, why would I bring the tools I need for the job that I'm doing? Um, so I'm doing this old style of loosening the strings and then kind of hand gripping the, the little screws to get a little bit more action. And we'll see how that, that does, because we're just getting really, really buzzy. Not yet. I'm going to keep working on this. I'll check back once I have it, you know, workable. All right, thanks for hanging with us there. We got this guy sitting in a pretty good place. Um, I probably would raise the A and the D up a little bit higher, um, but I got it as far as I could, and it'll work for now. Uh, lesson B to you at home, always bring the right tool for the job. I'm pretty bad at that. Anyway, uh, it is playing great, and it's doing the thing that we thought it was going to do. Um, we're, we've just got a little bit more range in the bottom end. Still feels like a four-string bass. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, you know, if you do what I did and you switch to what is effectively a slightly lighter gauge of string given the tuning, um, you know, 60, 80, 100 versus what we were doing before, probably 65, 85, 105, um, you're going to have strings that vibrate a little bit more widely. That's going to cause more buzz, so you're going to want to raise your action, um, all other things being the same. So keep that in mind if you're adjusting strings. Always, when you're going that wide of an adjustment, you're going to need to adjust a few things. Uh, but let's play around and see what we got here. So obviously that was just me playing on the E, A, and D. Uh, basically, we have the bottom end of our, our fourth string there, but let's use that, that, that fourth string, the B, a little bit more here and see how that affects things.
So yeah, we got a little bit more slink than you normally would on like a, a 35 inch scale or even a, a 34 inch scale if you were using like a 135, something heavier on the bottom. I didn't want to go too heavy on this guy since it's used to like a 105 or a 110 at the, at the biggest. But this is working fine. Uh, and just so you can see that B isn't too floppy even with a 125. Not bad, not great. I usually like a 130 or 135 to keep things nice and tight um, or have like a 36 inch scale or some really cool uh, fan fret scale to really get that, that bottom string tight. But again, really not bad as a 34. Uh, I really love how comfortable it is. And if you're mostly playing on the bottom end, then it's super easy to do that. What I really love about really any sort of instrument um, that goes down to B, whether it's a five or a six string or a four string bass, is that I can still really hub on that E where a lot of rock music is, but I can do it up here uh, in a higher position on the instrument and feel like I have more higher end range um, and I can very easily go down to that D. I always feel like the D is super handy in playing bass. Um, with most rock music, it comes into handy. The B, you know, depending on the, the genre, um, also, of course, if you're playing along with an orchestra or in a pit or anything like that, and you have a lot of things in E flat, super handy for that too. But anyway, that's the usual five string bass stuff. You probably know all that. Um, I just wanted to encourage you, if you think that uh, a B would really be really handy in your playing, this is an easy and, you know, assumably almost free, except for the cost of the strings, way to get a little bit of a different thing going on with your bass guitar. Um, I'd recommend something like a 60 to 125 or, you know, 65 to 135 if you want to go much heavier. Uh, anywhere in that range is going to work well for you. Just give your instrument a good setup, bring the right tools to do it, unlike me, and I think you'll be happy with the results.